2020 was such a year of chaos, sadness, loss, a lot of fear for many of us that we experienced. And the good news of the gospel speaks to it. There is a way to be gospel fluent in the midst of a pandemic. And we, we want to learn how to lean into that because we need to bring good news to the loss, to the chaos, to the fear. And the good news is that the biblical narrative starts in chaos, starts in darkness, starts without anything. And God speaks into the chaos and brings order. He speaks into the darkness and brings light. He speaks into nothing and there is something. And then just a few chapters into the story, humanity rebels and darkness re-enters and chaos is experienced and loss is all over the story. And yet God promises that he's going to do something about it. If we move forward in the story, we come to Jesus who enters into the chaos, who brings light into the darkness, who brings hope for our sadness. And what I love about the narrative of the Gospels is that Jesus is the one who feels absolutely everything we feel perfectly. See, God has given you and I the gift of feelings, that feelings are telling us that we have a need. And if we will feel what we feel, we will begin to understand what we need. And when we realize what we need, we can call out to God who can actually meet our need and provide the gift that we are longing for to satisfy what we have lost. Jesus, in terms of sadness, because I want to just hit that topic in particular, Jesus enters into the world and what do we see Jesus do? He weeps over Jerusalem because he realizes these, these people are sheep without a shepherd. When his friend Lazarus dies, even though he knows he's going to raise him from the dead, he weeps over the loss. He enters into it, feels it perfectly. And what I love about what Jesus does is he, as the perfect human, feels what we feel so fully that then he can actually satisfy the need completely. And so Jesus, even in his Sermon on the Mount, says things like this, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. In another other place, he says, If you are thirsty, come to me, and I will give you living water. And at the heart of the gospel is this recognition through our feelings that we have a need that ultimately God meets through Jesus Christ. So let's just take our sadness. The beauty of sadness, if you will feel it, is that sadness tells you, you have a need for comfort. And the good news of the gospel is not only did Jesus feel sadness for us and with us, but he went to the cross to be able to deal with the greatest loss we've ever known, which is a relationship with God. And in his death on the cross, paying for our sins and his resurrection from the dead, he made it possible for us to be reunited with God, to be reconciled. And then because he forgave our sins, to pour the spirit into our hearts, who is called the comforter. And the good news of the gospel is that if we will feel our sadness, especially in this last year, that we need comfort, because that's the gift of feeling your sadness, is you'll recognize your need for comfort. If you will feel that, and realize you need that, then you can turn to God through Jesus Christ and receive the very comfort of the Spirit, bring to you what you could never get anywhere else. And not only will you experience comfort, but there's a gift in your sadness, and that is you learn to accept what is actually happening. You learn how to look at the world and go, this is how it is. I can't change it, but I can accept it and then have a need for comfort in the midst of it. That's what God offers you in the gospel. Now here's the, the sad part. If you won't feel your feelings, of sadness in particular, then what happens is you start to go to self-pity. You need someone else to feel for you. And because they can't feel for you, not only do you go to self-pity, but you'll become a very demanding person. You'll be expecting everybody to give you what only God ultimately can. Instead of experiencing comfort from God and the gift of Him entering into your reality and giving you what you ultimately long for that He only can provide, you'll be looking everywhere else to find it and you'll continue to be full of self-pity and become a very demanding person and always be left empty, not receiving what you ultimately need in this place of sadness. So here's what I want to encourage you to do. In your sadness, in your loss, be honest to God about it. Tell him the truth. I, I, I'm sad. I lost a, a, a dream that I had, an opportunity that went away, a job, 
a, a family member I lost. And God is saying the way to have that comfort brought to your sadness is for you to say how sad you really are to him. And then trust that the God who is the God of all comfort because of what Jesus has done can bring to you the greatest comfort of all and be for you what you ultimately long for, which is one who will enter in to it with you and give you the deepest longings of your heart. And that is, you'll get the comforter caring for your sadness and then filling you with everything you've lost in ways that no other person or situation could ever do. I'm praying that you will believe the gospel right now, that you will go to God with your needs, that you'll realize Jesus can be for you what you've always wanted, and that he can feel with you what you are feeling, and then provide for you through his spirit the deep comfort you're longing for right now.